Hey there gang and welcome to your very first Laravel authentication tutorial. Okay then, so in this series we're going to learn all about authentication in Laravel and we'll build a simple authentication system into a Laravel application from scratch. In fact, we're going to be building on the final project from the Laravel beginners course I recently released and we're going to add authentication to that so that users can register, they can log in, log out, etc. And we'll also be implementing authentication guards so that only authenticated users can view certain pages. And even though you could use Laravel starter kits to do all of this for you, we're going to be building it from scratch because that way you'll learn a lot more about the whole authentication process. Now, if you're completely new to Laravel, then don't start here. I would definitely suggest watching my Laravel beginners course, first of all, to get the basics, then start this one. And in that beginner's course, you're going to learn how to make this Ninja Directory application, which is going to serve as the starting point for this authentication course. So definitely, definitely check out that. First of all, if you need to, the link is going to be down below this video and then come back to this course when you're done and you're going to learn how to add authentication to the project. Anyway, that's what we're going to be building during the series and um, we'll get started on that in just a few minutes. But first of all, I want to quickly explain how a Laravel handles authentication using something called sessions. So just a tiny little bit of theory, first of all, then we'll crack on with the code. So like I just said, authentication within Laravel applications is handled mainly through sessions. Now sessions are basically a way for the server to remember a user when they've logged in, whereby Laravel creates a session ID for that user and it stores it on the server. It also sends the same session ID back to the browser where it's stored in a session cookie. Thereafter, the browser sends that cookie to the server on every following request it makes. For example, when a user tries to navigate to a different page or when a form gets submitted and the browser sends a post request to the server. Then on the server, Laravel compares the session ID from the cookie with the session ID it stored on the server. And by comparing those, Laravel can deduce whether the user is authenticated or not. Now, to facilitate this whole session-based authentication flow, Laravel provides us with a whole bunch of authentication tools and features out of the box. And through these tools and features, it makes implementing a robust authentication system incredibly easy. Okay then, so now that little bit of theory is out of the way, let's crack on and set up the starter project, which we're then gonna add authentication to. So you can download the starter project from this GitHub repo right here, which I will leave the link to down below the video. You just need to make sure that the starter project branch is selected from the branch dropdown right here, then click on the code button and download a zip folder of the project. Once you've done that, you can unzip the project folder and open it up in VS Code. Also, if you're using Herd like I am to manage your Laravel applications, make sure you put that project folder within the Herd directory so it can be run and served up correctly. And by the way, you don't need to use this starter project if you've already got your own that you want to work with. That's completely fine because everything I'm going to cover in this series will translate to whatever Laravel project you're working with. Also, just really quickly, before we open that starter project up, I want to point out that I've created course files for every single lesson in this series, and you can view the code for each of those lessons by selecting the correct lesson from the branch dropdown. Once you've done that, you can hit the code button again to download a zip folder of the code for that lesson, or you can just browse right through it here. Anyway, now we've downloaded that starter project, let's unzip it and open it up. All right, so I've got this project open now in VS Code, and like I mentioned before, I placed this project folder inside the herd directory on my computer so it can run properly. I also renamed the project to ninja underscore network underscore auth, but you don't need to do that. Right then, before we can preview this application in the browser, we need to do a few things. We need to install all the PHP dependencies using Composer and all the front-end dependencies using NPM. We also need to set up the environment inside a .env file. And finally, we need to create a database and run a migration to get all the default database tables up and running. So let's start with the first step, which is to install all the project dependencies. Now we're gonna install the PHP dependencies using Composer by opening up the terminal and you can just type Composer, install, and then press enter. And then once that's done, we can clear down here and we're gonna install all the front-end dependencies by typing npm install and then pressing enter. Okay, so we've got all the dependencies installed and now we can carry on with the next step, which is to set up the environment by creating a .env file, 
within the root of the project. So let's add that new file first of all. And it's inside this file that we're meant to add configuration values like an app key, which is used for encryption and hashing or database path, etc. So we don't need to write all of this from scratch, thankfully. We've got another file called .env.example, which was generated by Laravel, and that contains a lot of this information. And we just need to edit a few things inside it. So we can open that example file up. We can copy all of it, and then we're going to go back to the file we just created and paste it all in. Now, the first thing we're going to update in this file is the app URL, because when we place a project in the herd directory, herd automatically creates a local URL for that project. And that URL takes the form of your project folder name and then dot test at the end. So since I renamed the project to ninja underscore network underscore auth, which you can see right here at the top of the file tree, I'm going to update the URL to that ninja underscore network underscore auth and then dot test at the end. Now, if you're not using herd, you can update this app URL to whatever setup you have. Okay, so the next thing we need to update in here is the app underscore key so that Laravel can use it. And to get a value for the app key, we can use artisan. So then first close the file and then open your terminal and you want to type PHP artisan key and then a colon and then generate. And this generates a key and it automatically assigns it to the app underscore key variable in the dot env file, which is really nice. All right, so that's the next step done. And the final bit of setup we need to do is to make a new database and run the migrations. So then we're going to be using SQLite for this series. That's a file based database, which is good for playing around with and for small applications like the one we're making. Now to make a new SQLite database, we just need to come to the databases folder and then create a new file. Then we should call that file database.sqlite. Now this file name represents the default database that Laravel looks for without having to update anything in the .env file. If you named your database something else, then you'll have to add a db underscore database value to that .env file where the value is a path to that database file. Anyway, we don't need to do that because we named it database.sqlite. So the only thing left we need to do now is run a migration to create all the project tables. To do that, we can open the terminal and type php artisan migrate, and then we'll say dash dash seed to seed the tables with dummy data and then we're going to press enter once you've done that you should get some kind of success message and then if you open that new database file you're going to see those new tables right over here and by the way in order to view sqlite files like this you need to install a vs code extension called sqlite viewer so make sure you install that as well okay then so all we need to do now is preview this project in a browser. To do that, we're going to run a command down here in the terminal, which is npm run dev. And that means all the public assets like the CSS are going to be served up by Vite for us. All right. And now we can just use that project URL, in my case, the one generated by herd to preview this in a browser. OK, then, so this is what the starter project looks like. We've got a welcome page. And when we click on this button, we get directed to a ninja listing page, which is at forward slash ninjas. So we can see a bunch of these ninjas, which are all coming from the database right here. And we can click on one to see more about them. We can also delete ninjas by clicking on the delete button. And we can add new ninjas by going to the create page and filling out this form right here, which I'm not going to do <laughs> right then. So that is the starter project up and running. In the next lesson, we'll explore this a little bit more and then we'll start setting up the authentication routes and views too, like the register page and the login page. By the way, if you want to get access to the entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's right here on the netninja.dev website. So I'll leave the link to this page down below. You can buy it now for just $2 right here. Or if you wanted to sign up for a NetNinja Pro subscription, which is just $9 a month, you'll get access to this course, plus all of my other courses, including all of the longer masterclass courses as well. Again, that's just $9 a month. And the first month is half price using this promo code right here. So like I say, I'll leave this link down below. Otherwise, my friends, really hope you enjoy the series.